Welcome to the Tribe of Testimonies. Here you will find conversations with faithful Native American members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, sharing their stories and their love of the Savior. My name's Andrea Hales. I'm Navajo, and I'm glad that you've decided to come and join us today. Good day, everybody. Uh, today, my guest is Clayton Long. I actually love that he talks about how um, he wasn't originally given the name Clayton. That came uh, in his in his youth, but not as a baby. And I love that story about him. Clayton has been on my list of potential guests for a long time. I don't even think he knows how long it's been. Um, but he, he's been on my list because he actually has helped with the translation of the Book of Mormon into Navajo, into Diné Bazad. And that's really awesome. And yeah, so also I danced with his daughter for a little while in a performing group at BYU called Multicultural Student Organization. And that was fun. I sent him a picture of us together in one picture and he's like that's my daughter yep that's your daughter <laughs> um yeah so I hope you enjoyed today's conversation um I've also listened to a lot of his podcast we talked just a little bit about that you can look that up and I've been really grateful for his podcast as well so I hope you enjoy this conversation with Clayton Long I'm on the phone today with Brother Clayton Long. Clayton, would you please introduce yourself in your tribal way as much as possible? If it's in your language, great. If it's not, that's fine. Not everybody speaks their language, and some languages are dead. Andrea, Da <laughs> Thank you, I'm Clayton Long, and I uh, wish to thank all my relatives who might be listening. Uh, when I say relatives, I'm including clans, I'm including people, meaning the net people. The net people exist not only here in the Southwest in the form of lang through language, the Apache languages, but all the folks up north um, who are I've connected with in the past and welcome to this session. Thank you. Would you please share something that you love about your heritage? It could be a story, a celebration, a way of life, a ceremony. Share something, anything that you love about your heritage as it relates to the gospel of Jesus Christ. As I was growing up, my father would gather us. We were just speakers of the net language, all of us. We didn't know anything about 
any other language. But we've heard there's other languages. We just didn't know. We didn't. We don't know how to say those words. As we stay together, we pray together. We we did all our upbringing was self-sustaining. We didn't have to go to a city or we 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 knew that there are things we could go to. We could go to a trading post. We could, but we 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 were self-sustaining. We had our own meat. We had our own garden we had animals we had uh, our own transportation we had our own home we built our own homes we had lived in hogans we we um had our own even uh we thought of our home as a kind of like a a a, a special place where there's holiness and that we 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 sustained ourselves mentally emotionally socially Virtually. And that carried down to the tie of the gospel or the church or the knowledge and understanding of the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it was very beneficial for us to have that foundation, I feel. I uh, one of the words that I have that that helps me a lot. And I live by it. And in English, I say, simplify. When things get a little hairy, meaning a whole bunch of things come up, I want to simplify. And when I do, I get blessed. And one of those ways might be prayer. One of those ways might be just rethinking things and restarting those kind of ideas. And I do, to this day, I have, I've, I've, and uh, I've, I've gone through my career, I've retired, and I now enjoy what I enjoy, and that is preserving language and culture. One of the things that I do is I go out into communities that are what I call lost their voice, where they feel like they're not getting help from anywhere. And yet I was, I'm able to be an instrument where I can kind of gather them and say, let's do it. I think you have something that you need to do. <clears throat> when everybody buys into that, we create a way to function as a community group. I've done this in a small town where I first taught in Montezuma Creek. And then I moved to Blanding, Utah, where I met with Blue Mountain Diné. And then there's a special group of people called Westwater people. And they, they are now on their way and they have their own system of kind of community group leaders. And one special thing that's happened in the last little while is I went down and I worked with this community down, what we call it, probably the most beautiful place that I've ever known. And that's called Monument Valley, Utah. In that place, there are schools, there are little, little stores and a special group of people down there and they made a, a decision to the kids from kindergarten to 12th grade to interview their mothers and their grandmothers and their aunts their local leaders relatives <coughs> when they do they came up with a book they actually wrote it and told, shared their story and the title of that book is perfect. The word is Hojon. Hojon is the word that they, our ancestors have lived by. I mean, they really use it on a daily basis as, as, as if there's strength in that word and that's energy. Hojon is a place of goodness. And because it's a good place of goodness, it's a place of um, energy, good energy. If you, I was, if you were to say, what is the Hojan? It would be peace, a place of peace, a place of joy, a place of harmony, and um, a, a, a place of love. And I, and I see as I grow older, I see more people that have their own 
knowledge of that, whether it be the Hawaiian Aloha spirit, whether it be the Chinese people, the, the Chi, all these different people have this understanding of peace and love and joy with their own language. For Navajo, it's Huizhong. And that's where the tie to the gospel is very strong. As you know, if Huizhong is peace, love, joy, and harmony, it really is in line with the gospel principles, particularly the one that brings the peace, love, joy, which is Heavenly Father, and more particularly, Jesus Christ. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the love of the world, of the universe. He is the gatherer of all goodness and the provider of all goodness. For that reason, I almost would say I would label Christ as Pujan. He is the energy that we, we all seek. So in a way, I'm, I would like to say, if I was to keep something from my culture, it would be the concept of Huizhong. Today, I've made it my own personal vision statement. Huizhong leads the way. And if others want to join in on this quest, I would love to be with them and tell them. Since Monument Valley, people have asked me to be part of their understanding of Pujong. I am going down there to help them with my ideas of what Pujong could really be. Uh, anyway, that is the, the, what I would take from the culture at this time that would really benefit many, uh, not only here, but throughout the world. So that's it. Love it. Um, so you have been part of translating the Book of Mormon into Navajo, and that's complete now, yes? It is complete. We're actually looking at the consistency, meaning that how is it that we need to make sure that everything in there is, you know, if we say something and like the word atonement, is that all the way through the book, you know, same word, same, that kind of idea. Yeah. So it is done. Uh, it will be online. It will be on your phone. It will be all, everywhere that you you uh, want to listen to this language in the, 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 the scriptures, the, the Book of Mormon. What are some of the greatest lessons or experiences that are not too sacred to share? What are some that you can share with with the listeners that we can learn from as well. Yeah. I would like to just share one right now. I, I don't know. I, I, I would like the church to be the one that shares more than what I'm, I will be sharing because they're the ones that kind of came to me to, to allow this to, to be done. When I, this, is, this was a desire in my heart many years, just not just, it didn't just happen the last few years or something like that. It's something that's been ongoing. It's part of my testimony that that is the Book of Mormon a record of God's words, Christ's words. And since I've gone on a, a quest of finding out, it, I would, it was given the revelation, personal revelation that I knew already that this was God's words. And uh, even though I didn't receive it in, the, in a way that, like this is true, it already meaning the spirit or voice in my mind said, you already know why, why are you asking? <laughs> Which takes me back to what I call the pre-existence for I did handle that book and that set of scriptures before I came. And that answers that question of you already know. Um, so let's go down to this idea of 
I, I, I prayed because I knew, and now I wanted to give it to my mother and my father as I started saying, they need to hear this. They need to understand this. But he didn't know English, so that's the beginning of desire to see how can I help make it so it's in the Navajo language. It took many years, but it, 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 it came to where I retired and I was available. And I asked if it'd be possible if I can help, and sure enough, I was given that. I almost treated it like a calling. It's a, something that I, I asked for, and the Lord said yes. And and now I'm able to do it and finish it. Uh, most translation done is usually done within maybe six, five, six years if it's part of a project. But as our team was able to do within the last two years, yeah. which is way good, meaning <laughs> it was like the right time, it was the right way of doing it, and, and the people were ready. The takeaway that I feel that is so powerful, I was thinking, this is going to get me to focus, 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 and it really goes inch by inch and do the, the, the translation. The thing that happened was it was totally opposite. The focus was not like a laser beam. It was open. It was kind of like some, you open up a jar or something. It was that kind of thing. I saw a new world. I saw a new beginning. I saw what it could do for many, many people. That every single person on this earth, if they could hear the words of Christ in their own language, the world will open for them. And that's kind of how, how I took this. It's, it's no longer just for one or two people like my mom and dad. I knew that this would be beneficial to all my people if they desire to partake. And that's kind of what it is. I see that every word that is there has great meaning in today's life, in everything that you do. And so it's kind of like every word is like a gold nugget, you know, <laughs> which is interesting because it was made in gold plates. Hmm. But it is true that there's a value, very valuable group of words. If you really want to know, you face who made it. If you face the one that said, and you'll know the power that will help you in your life today, <laughs> you will, your eyes will open, your heart will open, your soul will open, your body will be energized. And, but it's still up to you if you want to keep this going. So that, I, I would say that's the number one takeaway. Your life will open to wider instead of more specific. <laughs> instead of enclosing yourself, it will open yourself. So that's what the Book of Mormon in translation has done for me. Um, I, I was recently listening to something about language Actually, I think it was you. <laughs> I think it was your okay. podcast. Um, and how different words teach us different things in different languages. Have yeah. there been any scriptures or passages in particular as you helped with this translation that have be attained new meaning because of the words that you were able to use in the Nebizad? Yeah, well, our language actually is the teachings of our people that say there's two ways of learning. One way of learning is, is what I what we call 
in a hoa in the hoa we already knew so much before we came to this life that we're just relearning somehow we were, there's a veiled place before our eyes and we can get access it's kind of like i have a whole library already inside us and the other word for learning is oho ah it's just meaning le learning learning new things uh, which was not inside us but now it is learning and so that idea uh when when navajo words are said for example, even if I said God, our translation of God is we use the word God, but we also say Diyan. Diyan means holy. Diyan means we say Alila. We say miraculous ways. So even just that one word could give us a vision of multiple ways of thinking about this God. <clears throat> so that happens as you read about various, you might read a passage, but each word might have a multiple meaning idea. <laughs> it's it's kind of like Hojon. Hojon has multiple meanings. So when, when we say something like faith, Otla, what? Otla is it's like drinking water. It's like I'm thirsty and I seek something that will quench my thirst. And so the word otla means I thirst, I want to drink, I want to receive. Even though you might not know where to get it, you seek it. And so in that way, there's a little different definition of the word faith, you know, <laughs> believing. So I believe when you hear something in your own language, you, you get a new taste of different meanings of just, just that one word. Yeah, that's definitely what I was, I was wondering about. Thank you for teaching us about faith and how that, mm -hmm. that um, I think that draws us closer to our savior. It does. Yeah. It does, you know, the great, the four principles are what? Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Be in Jesus. In strong. I partake of Christ. That's what you're actually saying. Yeah. <laughs> Repentance. I plead. I plead so I can restore. I can be whole. I can reconnect with myself and all things that are good to God, to his creations, everything. Take upon his name means it's like your relative reconnecting with your relative. Your, and for the first time you're seeing each other, you just feel in that connection of love, peace, joy, happiness. And uh, the gift all these are gifts, but the last one, they call it the gift of the Holy Ghost, which is a special, you know, in our, our culture, we, we have a term, um, we didn't call it, we didn't call it uh, Holy Ghost or, you know, the Holy Spirit or, no, in our, in our stories, it says, it, uh, the twins, the, the hero twins of the Navajo people, their grandma gave, grandma says, I will give you some things to help you, guide you, and direct you. And one of those is called Nechche, that's just a small air. Come to find out small air acts just like the gift of the Holy Ghost. It guides, it protects, it teaches, it's a light, it's always around you. Kind of like a little bird. So, um, yeah, that, 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 uh, learning about 
I, I see it as connection. I, I, I see my, my language as a connection to holy things, more holy things. <laughs> so you said that you grew up not speaking English at all. At, no. at what point did you start learning English? And were you also raised as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? Were you raised as Christians? I no, no. I was not raised as Christian. My dad is a medicine man. He was kind of our spiritual giant. Um, but he was also always away because he, many, many people would want his services. So in a ways, some ways I felt like I didn't get to know my dad the way I wanted to get to know him. But later in years, we reconnected and we were able to talk and stuff like that. But in my younger days, it wasn't there. Um, so my mother was the one that raised me. So I was not a member, but at 12 years old, I have already gone to a boarding school. That's interesting. I didn't know why, my mother didn't know why I had to go to a place where I would be taught school. I had no concept of school. And of course, my relatives didn't have a real concept of school either because all I knew was I, nobody asked me to go. Nobody said, I, what do you think about it? I was just told, you need to go to this place, uh, boarding school. When I got there, immediately I was told, don't speak Navajo, learn English. <laughs> Why? Nobody know, nobody provides the why, you know, no why. Uh, I can't wear my the same clothes, I can't eat the same food, I can't I can't do the things that I was I grew up with the first six or seven years of my life. Um, and because it was a forced thing, I went into what I call a silent resistance. Deep in myself, I said, I will beat this. I don't know how long, but um, um, I will beat it someday. So that's why I, I do what I do today. I preserve language and culture. There's goodness in that language and in that culture. So that's that's where I start trying to learn. And I, I had to inch by inch. I was resisting every single inch and inch and and. Finally, I be begin to find reasons why I should speak English. Yeah, it, it's it's interesting how that went. It took me a long time I had to, even to read and write because I was not seeing that. But there was no benefit in my mind. Uh, I had the whole. I had everything that I needed right back home. And why why add to that kind of idea? And I I, I had no reason to speak English either. <laughs> but yeah. In my world, spoke English, or I mean Navajo. Nobody spoke English, so I didn't see a reason to apply it anywhere. Um, so that's that. As far as the the gospel, it, it was when I was experiencing school, and my mother said I was not learning anything, so she put me in the the only public school that was there in Kayanta. and I only lasted one year. She says that she's he's still not learning. And then the missionaries were coming around, you know, the elders. And uh, I liked it. You know, I enjoyed being with them, listening to their words. But one day, another group of elders came by. And they didn't look like Anglo people. Their, their skins were brownish color, black hair. And, and I saw them smiling all the time. And all of a sudden, they took out a ukulele, what do you call it, the little instrument? A ukulele. Ukulele. And they start singing in, in, in their language. And I thought, wow, that's powerful. And they bore testimony of the church. And they danced and sang some more. And I thought, that kind of happiness is very contagious. And I said to myself, 
I'm enjoying him. <laughs> I'm enjoying him because that feeling that I have with those. So I thank the Polynesian people for coming to my home and letting me see the gospel in fullness, not in part, in fullness. Because back home, they kept their language and culture with the gospel. And so I, that's how I joined the church, <laughs> 12 years old. Did you end up on the placement program? I did. My mom and my dad had to sign a piece of paper saying, yes, it'd be okay. Because I was not successful in boarding school. Or I, was, I might be succeeding a little bit, but I was not I was not up to my grade level in a sense. Uh, I was not succeeding in the school on the res. And my mother's probably her thoughts were like, he's not, he's not really grasping. And that's when 12 years old, I joined the church. I learned about a placement and I went ahead and my, my, I didn't sign up. My dad, and my mom and dad signed up for me. As long as they were given, they gave me okay, I was okay. And so I spent eight years on the placement program down in Tucson, Arizona. One of the best families that this world has to offer. <laughs> uh, they, when I went into their home, their home, they made a, an extreme makeover of their home. As I walked in, I saw pictures of Navajos. They weren't Navajos, meaning the, the family. I saw sheepskin on the, on the floor. And I saw, I, the first time I saw the Navajo dictionary was in their home. And I thought, these guys are bending backwards to tell me, keep your language, keep your culture. We're just going to add a little bit to it. You know, so I, I was blessed in that way. I've never heard of any family that has, that did that for their, for their placement <sighs> child. I'm yeah. like getting emotional. What you just described. Yeah. Yep. Awesome people. When we've talked to this morning and yesterday, you were mentioning that, um, the gathering is so important to you. I know that you do um, a a podcast right now, and mm -hmm. how does that podcast tie to the gathering, and how does the other work that you currently do tie to the gathering? Yeah, so this is a global picture, a global picture. Yes, the gospel is good. Yes, the work is great. Yes, the gathering is done by a group of church folks. But when you think about it, we need a, an inclusive idea. And so that's where the language and the culture is so, so good. And in order to do that, I used to be a teacher. And uh, as I, as I, as I kept wanting to teach more, I couldn't teach more because uh, kids are growing up. Um, I'm retiring and I'm thinking, and every time you taught a lesson, it was on a piece of paper, and then you taught it, but that was it. It was put in a drawer. It was no longer brought back up, you know? And I thought, there's got to be a way to preserve. I am so lucky that I live in a time when technology is in full force. In fact, when I think about the young people, that is their culture. From day one, they want to touch, and they want to hear, they want to feel, they want to see, and they want to have one. So everybody, just like everybody else, they have a phone or something. It's not just a phone, it's, it's a computer. It's a movie theater. It's a, it, it's a way to connect with other goodness, you know. And, and so I thought about, all right, let's preserve through technology. So that's why the podcast and the 501c3. And then I said, let's bring two cultures together. We have the culture of our ancestors and we have the present culture of the young people, technology. So I have one, I have one podcast I call TNT, Tradition and Technology. And I'm saying, hang on, they're both good. Hang on, learn of both and you'll be better 
best person. You will you will survive anything. <laughs> so that's how I I'm able to keep going with this preserving. Um, have you been able to? You said that you go out and do presentations sometimes. Have you been able to um, be a missionary while you've been out there, even though if if you go out and do a, a culture presentation, it's not necessarily a religious presentation? Right. right. So when I go out, it's the little things of the culture which is connected to the gospel terms. I don't say repent or be baptized or read the scripture. I don't, I don't do those. But I say, the, grandma said this, wake up early in the morning and say a prayer. All of us know that. All of us know that. When my dad, when he told us to get up before the sun, and as a family, we stood there and he said a prayer. The first word he said was, from this day forward, let there be peace, love, joy, and harmony. Give it to us, please, please, holy people. And see, he would, he, would, he would name off the holy people that he would know. And then at the end, he would say, this is in every Navajo prayer, traditional Navajo prayer hustling four times. He's saying, thank you. Peace has come again. Love has come again. Joy has come again. And harmony has come again. Thank you. And that was just for today. And in the evening, when we come back home, we would go around the Hogan, face the sunset, line up the way we did in the morning, the prayer, almost like a set prayer. I'm thinking, we're not facing the day now, we're facing the night. No, our world is 24-7. And then at the end again. It is to carry us through the night in our dreams and our rest and our thankfulness and our growth and our things that we, we, we still live, we're just resting till morning. So both places, there's growth. So anyway, when I go out to train, I want to focus on things that would make sense, that would give life, that would provide life, and that it will be kind of like an empowering thing that would carry people to whatever they want to desire. That's good. <clears throat> so I'm thinking that live those goodness principles and you'll be okay. I agree with that. What is one way your testimony and your knowledge of of your identity, how has that helped you um, get through any hard things through your life or helped you help somebody else through a hard thing in their life? Very good. Very good. When you know you know how to handle certain things. And you gotta take a bit piece by piece. It's just like being an athlete. At first, you're not the best. But as you take it apart and work at it day in and day out, you become the best. And it's a similar way to being spiritual, similar way to being the loving, similar way to being the giving person. Step by step, we become that. And when we add the Lord to that, there's a quickening that starts. <laughs> there's a quickening that happens. And if you love that quickening, you would want that to be with you every single day. And that's why prayer is so powerful. It's, you can have it every day. And you are not, you, I, I, I go on a, a walk every day and I call it my vision walk. You know, <laughs> I got to see something that's good. I want to see it. I want to see things come to me as I walk, as I work, as I travel, as I talk to people. One of the things I read a book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, 
And I remember one statement that was very powerful to me in there. If you want to learn something, teach it. Oh, wow. I didn't know how to read or write my own language. But I remember teaching it and put, all of a sudden I learned how to read and write my language. Because when you teach it, you, you get a better understanding. So that's great. I believe that that's how the Lord wants us to be. You can't be stand still. You got to always be climbing a sacred mountain. When you do the gifts of the, the mountain, the gifts of the spiritual and the, the knowledge of the world is right here at your hand, hand you know, your fingertips. So it's got to be done every day. It, it, you, you, you have to kind of almost wake up and say, there's something I want to do every day that's going to benefit me, my family, my friends, my brothers and sisters, you know. And uh, so you got to be taken active. Who are you? Who am I? I know who I am, but who I am, I really, am I, am I just, this, this is all? No, you're greater than that. Figure out, climb to that greatness is, is kind of what I'm saying. How has the blessing of the priesthood added to the fullness in your life? When I was asking if the Book of Mormon was true, because I was out there telling people this book is true, and I thought, no, I don't know it's true. You know, as a missionary, I was doing that, and I thought I was lying to people. So that's when I went on this vision quest idea and sure enough, I found out. But at the same time, people, when I was becoming a missionary, somebody uh, or priesthood brethren placed their hands upon me and says, I give you the power of the priesthood. You will, you will now be able to bless others and help others with the priesthood. And I remember thinking, how, how do I do that? I mean, I know how to do it. I just, how do, Am I, can I give a help to others through prayer, through this power? And uh, I thought, I, got, I better pray for this one too. So I did on a quest for that idea. And um, not only did I learn why I sh and how and what it does, but I actually, right before my eyes, my companion in the mission field, he he uh, he revealed to me that he was very sick. His kidneys were fading, and he knew that before he came. And he knew that he shouldn't be out in the mission field, but he chose to be doing the Lord's work. He came, and I said, and he asked us. He says, "Can you give me a blessing?" I said, "Yeah." I placed my hand upon him. I said his name. I said it in the name of Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Priesthood, I make you whole. That's it. That's all I said. And, and as soon as I finished, he jumped up. He gave me a hug. Thank you, Elder Long. No, he didn't say Elder Long. Thank you, Dr. Long. <laughs> goes, <laughs> the guy stood up, walked up. I'm fine. Let's walk in. Let's go well, back in. So we bore testimony. That experience also totally changed my life. To this day, I really honor what I know about that. And of course, I didn't know it also ran the church. So now I use it in other places. So that very is a gift, very good gift. And on the same vein, how has the the blessings of the temple added to your fullness in in the gospel of Jesus Christ? When you go up to the temple, there's a group of words. Holiness unto the Lord. The Lord has placed a spot on earth where he it is his home dedicated to him priesthood was involved, knowledge was involved, and love and peace and joy was in all those exists in his home. 
So when you go to, you try to do your best to be able to say, I want to go and I want to visit and I want to partake. And because of that, you'll be blessed with it. So it's kind of like the next level up in your life. What else do you want to learn about the Lord? If you want to, on your own, go on that vision quest. Go to the house of the Lord. Again, you'll be blessed with the global things, you know. When, I, when, when it says holiness, that means completeness. That means the whole. That means who you really are. You know, you might know what you are. Your mother might have told you who you are. And you're a demand, and you're born here, and you're part of this language and culture. No, you're more than that. You are a holy being. When we say the di, di represents holiness. Dien. Ne means ground, Mother Earth. A holy being that is here, placed on the earth to experience physical things. That's a dene. So right now, you and I and everybody that is here on the earth is a holy being. We just need to get to know each other or get, or get to know ourselves. And that as you go wanting, desiring to gain more, there is a place you can go. Temple. Love that. What does it mean to you to know that you belong to the tribe of Israel? I've, I've um, told you about my testimony. And I, I, I believe that uh, it's not just for me. I believe that everybody needs to have this personal revelation. And it's not way out there. It's right within you. And that every child, every older person, it doesn't matter how old you are, you're just like next door to this personal revelation. And every question that you ever have can be answered, whether it be through the voice of your mother or father or grandma, or through the scriptures, or through even just the sunlight, or just where you are. The answers are right here. I know that. That's how the Lord operates. <clears throat> I went up to the Yukon folks, my own folks. I didn't know that until I went up there. I reconnected with folks up there. I just went to the Southern Tishoni and there's a man there. And I was saying to him, what's, I, I read your language. I read your parts of the language. And, and I saw the word yate. And I said, Ken, Ken. Tell me about Yate. And he raises both his hands straight up in the air. Yate, he goes. I go, okay, what does that mean? Well, if you take apart the word Yate, Ya means heaven or heaven or sky, Ya. But E is an emphasis on a word. We stretch words. When, when now when we want to really emphasize something, we say, eh, you know, yat eh. And we really mean it. We just say yat eh. Yeah. But if you shorten that sound, it's at eh. Whoa, it's a word. At eh means it is. And so I said, and it, it, both Ken and I were saying, we, we're greeting, we're greeting each other in the power of heaven. Our words, the Navajo words. You ask any traditional people whose language is it? It's not my, it's the holy people's language. It, they gave it to us, they taught us, you know. And so we took it that way and we, we always think about it as this is a holy language. We need to honor it, you know. And and so, yat e. When when we say uh, Israel, it's on the Israel. 
바데고 주님이 크게 I come from a home called Israel. It's my family. I belong to that family. I have a brother, I have a sister, I have ancestors. And God came to them and blessed them. And that blessing is reserved for us today. More so than probably any other age as I think about it. <clears throat> so being belonging to the house of Israel is power, is knowledge, is understanding, is belief, is today, is who we are and what we're supposed to do. That's why the gather is so important. So I am Israel and we are all Israels that are wanting to be part of Heavenly Father's ways. Amen. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Amen. <laughs> Thank you for your time, Brother Long. I've I really enjoyed it and I've felt the power of the Holy Ghost be with us. Thank you. A few days ago, I had a friend come over. Uh, He will be a guest sometime in the future. He wants to be guest number 100. So look forward to him in 25 episodes. Um, But he came over and helped me and my mom and my sister learn how to do a little bit of Navajo family history genealogy work. We didn't find any we didn't find anybody. We found um footprints of of family. We found marriage records, we found um draft records, we found we meaning he <laughs> Um, we, we found census records and then two days later he sent me a list of possible, of probable records at the University of Utah. I don't know if they're actual audio of them or if they're just transcripts of audio of one of my great-grandfathers and his wife, my great-grandmother, and and I'm really looking forward to um, accessing those and finding out what they had to say. Trying to do family history work is discouraging for me because I don't know the language because my grandma doesn't talk about family and hers are the lines that are um, short on our tree so anything is precious to me so I I just wanted to share that um, looking forward to getting to know family that I don't know and I'm grateful that there is an eternal plan that we can do that and I hope you have a super wonderful awesome day. Tribe of Testimonies is not affiliated with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The music is a traditional hymn, Come Thou Found of Every Blessing, arranged and performed by Kyle Forsyth. If you know someone who might be interested in being a guest, please reach out to me at tribeoftestimonies at gmail.com.